Hello guys! Today we have this mostly technical video, where I will talk about the reason why all the DDR workout videos previous to DDRX beginner's course have a frame rate of 30 frames per second, and what I will do to increase it to 60 frames per second using Handbrake. I'll talk about several topics. If you are particularly interested in how I de interlay 60i to get 60 frames per second using Handbrake, please forward to this timestamp. If you want to skip the technical stuff and see how this will affect the channel, then forward to this timestamp. Well, let's start by talking a bit about the difference between progressive video and interlaced video. As you may have noticed in the last video, the workout course 3 for DDRX, the video looks very smooth compared to previous videos. This was thanks to activating the progressive mode for DDRX, an option I recall I found about many, many years ago, but one I have completely forgotten prior to starting with the channel. The progressive mode lets you get a video output of 60p where we have 60 frames per second. To put it plain for anyone unfamiliar with the term, it means that 60 frames are displayed in one second, thus the motion is very smooth. If we don't activate the progressive mode, the output is interlaced 60i. The previous DDRX workout courses 1 and 2 were recorded at 60i. It is the same for all DDR previous games recordings, as they lack the option to be displayed in progressive mode. So, this 60i video output should mean also 60 frames per second, doesn't it? Yes and no. Uh, more like no. In interlaced mode 60i, we don't have 60 frames per second, we have 60 fields per second. Oh, okay. And uh, now, what the frack is a field? When we say frame, we refer to a full image of a video at one point in time. Very straightforward. When we say field, we have an image where we have all the even lines of one frame at one point in time, that would be one field, and all the odd lines of another frame shot at a slightly different time, that would be another field. It looks very weird, and it looks even weirder if we display the interlaced video as is, as you can see right now. This technique was developed in the old analog television era to save bandwidth. The old CRT televisions displayed one light at a time very fast. To trick our eyes in thinking we were watching 60 frames per second using half the information, they used interlaced video, first displaying all the even lines and then all the odd lines very fast. This created the illusion of 60 frames per second but using only half the information. It's a neat trick, but nowadays most displays are digital and expect progressive video. We end up with the mess you are watching right now if we show the interlaced video as is. So, for modern digital displays to show an interlaced video correctly, we need to deinterlace it. This means transforming the fields into full frames. While most televisions do a good work deinterlacing in real time, video sharing platforms like YouTube expect progressive video to display it correctly, regardless of the browser or device where you watch it. Since the first video of the channel, Shotcut has helped me with the deinterlacing, but we are only getting 30 frames per second. Let's check it out. When I add an interlaced video to the timeline, Shotcut handles it as if it were a 30 frames per second progressive video, which seems a bit strange since the video is interlaced. From the information I researched in some forums, it seems Shotcut is not field aware. That is why it treats the 60i videos as if they were 30 frames per second. We can see it here in the timeline. We have minutes of 30 seconds for this video. It is taking the two fields and with them is creating one frame. That is why we are only getting 30 frames per second. When I export it to the final file, I always choose Yadif Temporal Spatial Best as the day interlacer and Hyperlanxos Best as the interpolation. From several tests, these settings were the ones that resulted in the best image, in my opinion. In the final video, unfortunately, we only get 30 frames. 30 beautiful frames, but we only get 30 of them. This is very noticeable if you watch the most recent DDRX video, and then you watch one of the older videos. This disparity is what got me in the quest of looking for a method to make the videos for prior DDR games to look like they were 60 frames per second while rendering them as progressive videos. Settings on the Elgato Game Capture HD or the PlayStation 2 were not an option. If the PlayStation 2 natively cannot get an output of 60p, the Elgato Game Capture HD cannot record higher frame rate than that. As I mentioned, shortcut settings are not the solution either. It always deinterlaces to 30 frames per second, 
even if I specify an output of 60 frames per second. If you think I'm missing something here, please let me know. Therefore, the solution is to use some other tool to deinterlace the source DDR videos from 60i to 60p, creating 60 real frames. We have to create 60 frames using only half the information. There are many ways to do this. For the moment, I have chosen to do it using a program called Handbrake. Let me show you which options I will use to deinterlace the future DDR videos. First, I open Handbrake and open the video to deinterlace. Ok, first thing, it's the only video, so let's uncheck that Align AB Start option. Next we go to Dimensions, I don't want any cropping, so I choose Custom and set everything to zero. I want all dimensions to be identical to the source, so I set Anamorphing to Custom. I choose Custom because I want the width to be exactly 720 and the height to be 480, same as the source. For the DDR videos, this output display size, although it looks a bit funky, it's correct. Now we go to the interesting part, the filters. Here I choose the interlace detection to be off, I know the whole file is interlaced. And choose the deinterlace method to be Jadif and the preset to be Bob. This combination, at least for the DDR videos, is what I feel outputs the next to best image. There is another combination that delivers a great image too. The interlace set to decom and preset to EEDI2 Bob. This combination yields a very nice result, but it takes a very long time to process. How long? For a 4 minutes video, it takes about 40 minutes to deinterlace it. It may be a great method, but it's not practical at all. Ok, let's return to the original combination of Jadif and Bob. Lastly, let's go to the video tab. Here I change the frame rate to constant frame rate and adjust the frame rate to 5994. For better quality, without increasing the processing time too much, we set the constant quality slider to 10RF and set the encoder preset to slow. To avoid having to configure this again, we add it as a new preset. All that is left to do is to specify where the final video will be saved and click Start Encode. For a 30 minutes video, this process will take about 40 minutes. Ok, let's check the result and compare. Here we have the final videos created in Shotcut. The one in the left is with the deinterlacing from Shotcut alone at 30 frames per second. The one on the right is after editing in Shotcut, the deinterlaced video at 60 frames per second we created in Handbrake. As you can see, the result looks very smooth. Let's check it full screen. The interlacing is not perfect. The program is creating a full frame from half a frame. But I think these settings using Handbrake deliver a great result. It looks pretty much as what I see from the Elgato Game Capture HD direct output to my television. Well, this is how you can deinterlace a 60i video to get 60 frames per second using Handbrake, with a pretty nice result in my opinion. If you are curious about how deinterlacing algorithms work, I leave some links to videos I found interesting in the description. Now, how will this affect the DDR workout videos? Well, for starters, for the upcoming course 3 for DDR Max, I'll deinterlace the videos prior to editing so we can get the first 60 frames per second course for DDR Max. By the way, I already have the song list and I'm already recording the sessions for the video. I think I'll have it ready on the first half of January. As these enhancements have nothing to do with recording again, I plan to upgrade all the previous videos. It's going to be quite this item. I'll start with the most recent video, the course 2 for DDR Max 2. I'm really excited to watch it entirely at 60 frames per second. Upgrading all the 14 workout courses will take some time, and I'll have to delete the previous videos, which is very unfortunate, but it would look a bit weird to have the same video uploaded twice in the channel. But I'll make a couple of exceptions. Like the first video of the channel, 
the first workout course for Supernova 2, and our most popular video, the workout course 1 for DDR Max. I think I'll preserve these two videos as they are right now for historic purposes of the channel, but I plan to make enhanced versions for both of them. Same recordings, but adding some details, like adding music to the outro voiceover. And possibly, for the DDRX workout courses 1 and 2, I'll make new recordings using native progressive mode. For both of them I have perfect excuses to make new recordings. For the first course I have no idea why, but at some point the video starts looking horrible even at 1080p. It did not look like this before and I have no idea what happened, but it's a great excuse to have to upload it again. For the second course, the reason has to do with the speed of Butterfly Heavy, which I'll talk about in a later video. It may be a lot of work, but I'm really excited to enhance all the videos. Sadly, we will lose all previous comments and views, but I think it will result in a much more enjoyable workout for all of us. I'm looking forward to it, and I hope you're as thrilled as I am about it. Also, if you think there is a better way to get 60 frames per second from the 60i videos, please let me know in the comments below. I also checked an alternative way using a program called AVSynth, but oh my, the steps to the interlace there make the process so much more complicated, but I'll maybe check it out later again. Well, this was somehow part of the after video for the DDRX Core 3. I still would like to talk about some other topics, but I think we agree this video is already too long. I hope you enjoyed this rather technical video. Really, thank you so much for watching and staying until the end. If you enjoyed, please remember to leave a like and maybe to click that subscribe button. You are welcome to come for the interlacing how-to and stay for the workout courses. I promise you'll have a lot of fun with them. See you next time with the third workout course for DDR Max. Good luck, happy holidays and take care. Frugal pan, out.